day to you and welcome to this video summary on cord prolapse. My name is Dr. Pareva. Now, what is cord prolapse? To understand what cord prolapse is, we first need to understand what cord presentation is. Okay, so before then, presentation refers to the part of the fetus occupying the lower pole of the uterus or the pelvic brim. The presenting part is said to be the leading portion of the presentation, which lies immediately inside the internal post as felt at vaginal examination. So, there are different kinds of presentation, but the normal kind of presentation is the cephalic presentation. Other abnormal presentation, also referred to as malpresentation, include presentations like breech, shoulder presentation, bro presentation, Cord presentation etc now cord presentation is defined as the presence of the umbilical cord felt either beside or distal to the presenting part but with an intact fetal membrane however when the fetal membrane ruptures in the presence of cord presentation it becomes cord prolapse and cord prolapse is said to be an obstetric emergency and a significant cause of morbidity and mortality. This is a diagram that describes cord presentation as against cord prolapse. In cord presentation, we have an intact fetal membrane, while in cord prolapse, the membranes are seen to have ruptured. The incidence of cord prolapse is about approximately 0.2%. Of all deliveries, that's one in 500 deliveries. Now, there are different kinds of, there are basically two types of cord prolapse. There's the occult cord prolapse and the overt cord prolapse. In the occult cord prolapse, the umbilical cord lies adjacent to the presenting parts, okay? And it may be difficult to palpate it during a vaginal examination. While in the overt cord prolapse, the umbilical cord is seen below, is either felt below the presenting part or very often or very commonly it protrudes through the introitus. This is a diagram that shows um, the occult cord prolapse with the umbilical cord lying adjacent to the presenting part, in this case, cephalic presentation. Whereas in cord, present, in cord presentation, the membrane is intact, while in the overt cord prolapse, as you can see, the umbilical cord protrudes through the introitus of the vagina. What are the risk factors for cord prolapse? Well, these include factors that prevent proper fitting of the presenting parts, such as low birth weight, premature delivery, bridge and shoulder presentation, multiparity, multiple pregnancy, most especially involving the second twin, fetal anomalies, hydram noise, and cephalopelvic disproportion. Cord presentation can be diagnosed um, essentially via a vaginal examination, okay, uh, where the loops of cord is palpated through the membrane. Whereas, Occult prolapse may be difficult to diagnose simply with vaginal examination. However, occult prolapse is suspected if there are fetal heart rate changes, changes such as variable deceleration, bradycardia, or both. Whereas in overt cord prolapse, Diagnosis can simply be by visualizing the cord protruding from the introitus or by palpating the loops of cord in the vaginal canal. How is cord prolapse managed? For cord presentation, the treatment is caesarean section, especially if the cervix is not fully dilated. For cord prolapse, the management depends on two factors really, the viability of the fetus and the degree of cervical dilatation. So we're going to take different case scenarios. Case one, how do you manage cord prolapse 
in a with a non-viable fetus well in a non-viable fetus vaginal delivery should be allowed to progress in the absence of any contraindication case two cord prolapse with a viable fetus with full cervical dilatation as at the time of prolapse vaginal delivery can be allowed um, to progress um, in the presence of an experienced obstetrician and where there are no contraindications to vaginal delivery. This can also be expedited with episiotomy, um, with forceps and even vacuum extraction. Case 3. Cord prolapse with a viable fetus but with incomplete cervical dilatation as at the time of prolapse. The mother should be placed on oxygen at 46 liters per minute. If the umbilical cord protrudes through the introitus, the cord is wrapped in a sterile gauze, soaked in warm normal saline and replaced back into the vagina. Uh, this is to avoid temperature changes in the cord, which can lead to cord spasm and eventually compromise um, the blood supply to the fetus. Okay, so in the process of you know replacing the cord back into the vagina, we must pay attention to minimal handling of the cord, which can also lead to cord spasm. Next, the patient is placed in knee chest position, also known as triangle position, or the foot of the bed is raised. All of this is to relieve pressure on the cord. Alternatively, applying pressure vaginally to push the presenting part out of the pelvis or by filling the bladder with 500 ml of normal saline helps to elevate the presenting part and relieve cord compression. It's important to note that total cord compression for longer than 10 minutes will cause cerebral damage and if continued for around 20 minutes, it could result in intrauterine fetal death. This is um, a diagram that shows the knee chest position. All of these measures are taken while pre preparing for an emergency caesarean section. It's important to note that a pediatric team should also be on standby for immediate resuscitation of the newborn following delivery. It, here are some complications of cord prolapse. Complications include cord compression, fetal hypoxia, brain damage, death and cerebral palsy. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to take the quiz on cord prolapse at www.themedula.com.